Good evening, BFA. My name is Emily, and this is Pilot, and we are Vice President and President of the BFA Theater Council. And if, yeah. yeah. If you're wondering where Susan is, first of all, check your emails. And fortunately, Susan has come down with COVID. Which means, like it or not, you're stuck with us as your host tonight. <laughs> Tonight is a night to recount our year together, recognize our achievements as a community, and finally, send our seniors off. So to start the night, we would like to introduce your BFA 21 to 22 Theater Council as they give us some short speeches recapping our year in theater. My name is Rachel Ledoux. I am your sophomore representative for this year. Um, I am giving my speech talking about just what the Theater Council does in our community and department in case you aren't aware. I don't know how you couldn't be aware, but you know, in case you weren't. So one of the most important and little known parts of theater is a lot of the work done behind the scenes to make each show a success. Um, in BFA's theater department, a lot of that work is done by our Theater Council. Pretty much every performance and event that we put on is behind the scenes, not only by Susan and Mr. Bell, but by student representatives like all of us, putting together fundraising events, planning cast parties or reunions, pretty much every event that we do to make every performance go smoothly. And you know, I've been part of it for two years now. I was our freshman representative last year, and I was lucky enough to be reelected as sophomore rep this year. And it's been a really awesome opportunity for me to see how much of that work gets done behind the scenes and what all of that looks like. I think it can be really easy to not be aware, I guess, of what work is being done outside of your like realm of knowledge when it comes to theater. Obviously, we all put so much work into every production, but a lot of extra stuff is done, you know, weekly, bi-weekly meetings, fundraising events, like I said, a ton of stuff just to make all the performances go really well. So, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm gonna pass it off to Lindsay to talk about our fall musical. Hey, good morning, or good evening, BFA Theater. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Lindsay Bernard. I'm the secretary of the Theater Council this year. Um, as many of you know, our annual musical back in the fall was Into the Woods. Uh, super fun. After two years since we put on Matilda and one full fall season without a musical, it was wonderful to get back to performing with all of you. Uh, plus, we got to welcome our new class of freshmen with our first show of the year. Uh, both the freshman and the sophomore class, along with a handful of juniors and seniors, had their first BFA musical experience with Into the Woods. Um, our first week, which was complete with intense workshops and auditions, showed your strength and your courage. So thank you for your bravery to join our theater community. Uh, we also owe a big thank you to our fearless stage manager and assistant stage manager, Yuki Benjamin and Penelope Noza. <laughs> We could never have done that show without you too, so thank you. Um, also, a big thank you to Mr. Aaron Barsumium for teaching us our music and taking on the role of music director, as well as Chris Ledoux, our accompanist. <laughs> I have a lot of thank yous, so you might want to hold your applause till the end after. <laughs> Next, uh, Ms. Kamitsis, thank you, who, uh, you taught us our, mo our movements to make the songs in our show visually appealing on stage. And of course, our lovely director, Susan Palmer, gave us not only the blocking, uh, but also the spirit to tie our show together. 
Uh, thank you to the entire artistic design team, pit band, and crew members who also worked tirelessly to put this wonderful musical together. Um, after these initial rehearsals uh, came the toughest part of all, which was show week. Um, with new lengthy Saturday rehearsals that we added this year, uh, we all put in countless hours to learn the material, plan different scene changes, and of course, make our beautiful set. Uh, thank you to our set designer, John Devlin, scenic artist, uh, Kate Bell, and <laughs> our assistant scenic artist, Ivy Hong, who not only helped to design the incredible ramps that we used during our production, uh, but also other pieces, including the flats that you could see during the prologue if you came and saw our show or were in the show, um, and like the various trees and other um, set design that we used during the show. Uh, so, Into the Woods was no small challenge. Uh, it took the work of our entire theater community to put on masks and all, um, but I'm thrilled to report that it was a very successful show. Thank you to all of you. Uh, next, I would like to welcome Emily Parent to talk about One X. Okay. Hi there, I'm still Emily. I'd like to speak to you about the one act this year. Our one act, She Kills Monsters, was a huge success and was a hit among our cast. One act is different from the musical in that it is only roughly an hour, there's little to no singing or dancing, and it's more technically challenging. But that's one of the great things about the one act. It provides a chance for both techies and actors to enhance their technical skill and refine the tools that may otherwise get overlooked during the musical. And it's an experience that makes a good actor a great actor. She Kills Monsters is an interesting show in that it contains a lot more dark themes than BFA theater is typically used to performing. The show contains a lot of themes of bullying, homophobia, grief, loss, and trauma. As a cast, we had to put a lot of trust in each other to handle these topics with care, while also staying true to the work. This show was, in, was also incredibly combat heavy. As a cast, there was a lot of trust in each other to know our own and each other's limits and care that we were all safe as we acted. The One Acts had a lot smaller cast than the musical, and as such, we were an, an incredibly tight-knit family formed. Speaking as someone who was lucky enough to play one of the leads, I got to work with every actor and techie and watch as we all got closer than ever before. Even if two of us had COVID and one of us had pneumonia the week before the show, and we didn't actually get a full cast run through until the day before, we created a beautiful show unlike no other. Next, I'd like to welcome Emma Gibson to talk about Junior Jam. My name is Emma Gibson, and I'm the freshman representative of this year's. Oh, I'm scared. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm the freshman representative in this year's theater council, and today I'm going to be talking about Junior Jam. Speaking as a freshman, the idea of Junior Jam was definitely overwhelming at first. I mean, trusting the other kids in your grade to direct and choose a play that you have to perform in front of other people that seemed kind of scary. But mostly, we were excited for the challenge. It was an incredibly edu educational experience of being a director and learning all the things that had to go into a performance. All of the pieces, people, and collaboration everybody had to do, and the trust my castmates gave me and our other director really made the experience that much more fun. We learned to work as a team, how to lean on each other, give and receive advice and criticism. We learned what works and what clashes on stage and in our relationships, and how that dynamic tied to our relationships off of the stage. We learn how to collaborate with the, with the adults around us and ask for help and guidance when necessary, and also learning when to say, we got this right now with Susan Palmer and Doug Bell was really the best space for us to do that. We learned so much about theater as a whole by doing this and had so much fun. I mean, seriously, getting to spend a couple hours a week after school with your friends doing something you love, how could that get better? And yet it did. We, we made new connections, gained new skills, and learned new things, and had the most fun while doing it. And for all these reasons, I can confidently say that Junior Jam was an amazing experience, and I'm so glad I got to en enjoy. <laughs> and now, um, Connor Powell will be talking about the 
Czech representative side of things. <laughs> I seem to have lost my speech. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Connor Powell. I'm the council's outgoing tech representative, uh, as well as BFA's live sound technician. Um, the theater club had a very successful year, aside from teching all of our shows that you just heard about. Um, we also did routine maintenance work on the pack, and we also continue to learn about you know, different parts of theater tech. I personally actually learned how to run, sort of, <laughs> recorded sound this year. Um, another point, uh, important part of this year was training replacements for a lot of our seniors who are leaving this year. Um, our graduating class has, among other important people, uh, me, um, <laughs> our lighting tech, our stage manager, and several stage hands, who are all obviously very important in our productions and difficult to, uh, to replace. Um, however, I'm happy to report that both new and returning faces have stepped up very well to fill these positions, and I am pleased to say that for the first time in three years, I can uh, knight someone else to be tech representative, and I won't have to awkwardly tap myself on the shoulder with a sword. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to thank a couple of adults who are always very important to the technical aspect of theater. First, obviously, Mr. Doug Bell, our uh, technical director and theater tech advisor. Um, none of us techies would have any clue, really, what we're doing without your mentorship and guidance. We thank you so much. On a personal note, I would also like to sincerely thank you for introducing me to theater and making sure that I won't leave anytime soon. Um, next up, I'd like to thank Dino Patsouris, our resident videographer and media guru. <laughs> Dino's help was crucial to keep our productions afloat during the height of COVID, and his help broadcasting them both live and recorded has been irreplaceable. Dino continues to be an important part of the theater community, and we would like to thank him for all of his help. On another personal note, I would like to curse Dino for stealing my sound booth. Um, even now, I can see his Mac back there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, lastly, I'd like to thank every other adult who has been a part of our productions. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, no personal note this time, but I would like to say that I am thrilled that I have been able to serve on this council for three years, as well as be a part of this amazing community for a full four years. It's been, a, been an amazing experience, and I've met so many people, both actors and techies, that I will never forget. Thank you all for this experience. Um, next up, we will have Rachel Ledoux, who will be reading Emily Farrell's speech, as she is unfortunately unable to be with us here tonight. Hi again. Uh, Emily wrote this speech. I am reciting it for her in her place, like Connor said. So when it says I, not I, Emily I. So, hi everyone. It has been my absolute joy and pleasure being your social media rep and sometimes treasurer for the BFA Theater Company this school year. We were lucky enough to have two different fundraising events throughout the year, one at homecoming and one last week during Junior Jam. To have the entire theater company rally together to raise money for something that we love so much was such a beautiful thing to witness. Thank you to everyone who supported our bake sales. As for social media, we are lucky to have an outlet like this. Whether on Facebook or Instagram, sharing our love of theater has allowed our shows to spread farther than our community. Theater is something that must be shared. It has been a wonderful representing our online presence and promoting our theater company. It is definitely a role I will never forget and will be happy to pass on later tonight. Yours always, Emily Farrell. Yeah, we're both short. <laughs> it's really just a power struggle against Connor over here. It's, yeah. <laughs> How do we type it <laughs> and keep it that way so Connor doesn't touch it anymore? Much. It's still not ours. 
We'll get there. It's no, it's not up here actually. Blind, blind. <laughs> I have it on my phone. Okay. Hold on. Kay. Excuse us for just a moment. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. Almost there. Almost it's right there. here. We marked it. Okay. First. So each year we elect new drama officers, and these students take on the very important duties that you just heard about for the theater program. They handle publicity in the school, media, and fundraising, as well as many other things behind the scenes like Rachel talked about. They support communicating with the larger community, advocating for student needs, and they meet regularly. When I say your name, please come up onto the stage and line up accordingly. We will be knighting our new theater officers for the year of 2022 and 2023. So first up, uh, I would like to say that the freshman uh, representative is always elected after the fall musical of the following year. So the freshmen are able to move in, get engaged in the theater community, kind of get a feel for things and understand a little bit better. So our first actual knighting will be Rachel, who will be knighting the new sophomore representative, representative Emma Gibson. <laughs> Next. Uh, she's not here right now, so while well, you don't have to knight yourself, you have to knight an invisible person. So you don't get a normal one, but Connor will be knighting our new tech representative, Sophia Williams. Uh, in place of Emily Farrell, we are going to have Rachel do the next two knightings. So Emily, or in honor of Emily, we will have the first knighting for media representative, Jasmine Duncan. That's okay. Yeah, I'll give you a moment, don't worry. All right, Rachel will also be knighting the new treasurer, Mackenzie Smith. Lindsay will be knighting the new secretary, Madison Gagne. <laughs> Emily Parent will be knighting the new vice president, Rachel Ledoux. And I also don't get a normal knighting because Emily Farrell is not here, but I will be knighting her as the new theater council president. This is your new 2022-2023 Theater Council for the next BFA year. We are so excited to have them. Please give them one final round of applause. And now you all can politely return to your seats. We're next up. I'll let you actually talk about this a little bit more. It's behind me your phone. I didn't turn mine on. Goodbye, Council. Goodbye. Thank you, please. So, a sort of new tradition to theater awards has been the addition of a senior performance. Um, it only feels, I'm so close to this, sorry. It only feels fitting that the seniors get, you know, their last, last hurrah in, um, on this stage. They get to take their final bow all together. Um, so, as dictated by me, um, this is, <laughs> shockingly, this is the senior performance. You'll see. <laughs>
spike tape to remind you of our love. to be funny. An important tradition, I should probably take this off to a more serious tone now. An important tradition at BFA Theater is the presidential testimony. The theme to the testimony is always, what theater means to me. Pilot will be giving his speech on what theater means to him. We have not heard it yet. See, the little secret that I kept from C uh, theater council was that I went home and rewrote this entire thing because I hated the original one. <laughs> so, yeah, that was today. So, <clears throat> hello everyone. As the 2021 to 2022 BFA Theater Council president, like Emily said, I get the honor of getting to continue that tradition of the president speaking about what theater means to me. For me, theater has always provided me with an escape. When I was in middle school, theater was an escape from the torture that was boys' middle school soccer and basketball. No need to explain, the Axe body spray does that itself. <laughs> Confidently, I say that theater is the most inclusive creation. 
There isn't a single person who stopped from doing theater, and I find an immense beauty in that fact. Theater is often thought about as a performance on a stage, and it's a very big part of it, so let me talk about it for a second. On stage, there are an infinite amount of roles that can be played, but there are an infinite amount of characters. I hear one of you thinking it. I hate to tell you, you're wrong. Every character in a show is a husk for us as actors. All humans have the ability to take a character in, in so and assign them a unique interpretation. Those of us in theater are the ones who are brave enough to try. Theater is like a small needle with a thread that slowly loops you around until you're stuck with some of the most amazing people. Over the past nine years, I found the courage to perform in over 13 different shows, 10 of which were on this stage with my fellow cast members. After middle school, some of my closest friends, Lindsay Bernard and Emily Perrin and I, were cast in Susan's first solo directed show at BFA, Shrek the Musical, and we had Yukina Benjamin, Kaya Hudak, and Isabella, Will Isabella, oh my God, Isabella Williams on the tech crew, and they were very important and we love all of them. Minus a musical in our junior year due to COVID, this city school group has grown closer and stayed together, and I thank theater for that. It consumed all of our lives, and if you were lucky enough, you've spent a 16-hour day at school with me preparing for a show. When I get to be on stage, I get to be a whole new person. I get to step away from the stress of my social life, my job, school, the world, and every show is a story written to go a certain way. But despite that, no two shows are ever the same. One night, things are smooth, while another night, Michael Voss is kicking his belt off stage while Emily tries to discreetly grab it. A different night, someone's prop is missing and goes on stage without it, and another night, a swing is falling from the ceiling and hitting someone in the face. There might be a new audience interaction between intermission, or someone finally hits the high note perfectly and gets to feel beyond proud of their hard work. Theater has improved my happiness, my confidence, my social skills, my time management skills, and I've gained so much from my time in theater. Theater prepares us for the world because it teaches us to think outside of the box, to have confidence in ourselves, and it teaches us to love one another. Theater has always been compared to a family because it's nothing but a family. There's fighting, laughing, crying, and every emotion you can think of, but times 10 because we're theater kids. <laughs> <laughs> the relationships I have made will always hold so much importance to me. I cherish the memories, the experiences that I've been able to share with all of my castmates over the years. I look forward to myself and others here continuing theater in some way, shape, or form beyond high school. I look forward to the opportunities, the relationships, and the, exper the experiences that await all of us in the future. So I please ask that many of you continue being involved in theater like I do. Moving up to high school allowed me to make many friends in theater, one of which is not here tonight. Susan Palmer has endlessly supported me throughout the years, as well as my fellow classmates. She's someone who encourages people to test their limits, and she's helped me gain confidence in myself as an actor, a musician, and a person. As I stand on this stage speaking to an audience one last time as a BFA senior, I just want to encourage and emphasize the importance of finding theater in your life. It saved mine, and I believe it helps so many people out there be happy and find the confidence that they need. Thank you to all of my mentors who have relentlessly had to deal with my true personality in theater. And one final thank you to Susan Palmer, who taught me that we have a gift to give and this world wants to know. <laughs> Sorry, Pilot wanted me to cry. <laughs> now, I see a lot of parents in the audience and I first wanna thank you all for being here. I know coming to a high school auditorium at seven o'clock at night sounds like the greatest time of your life, <laughs> but seriously. I hope all the parents here and who are watching and whose children are definitely gonna relay this back word for word, take notes. <laughs> I hope you know that you are the backbone of this theater. It is not us, it is not, it is not us as children, because there's only so much that a child can do. We can do a lot of things, like throw together a whole awards night in a week. <laughs> but we can't reroute a whole family. We try to, but we can't. We can't move dinner around every night because rehearsals started going later. 
A lot of us can't drive ourselves home from a late night rehearsal. You bring us here on Saturdays and you pick us up at nine o'clock on tech week. You make sure that we are getting fed even when we can't make family dinner. You're here every show and you bring a bouquet of flowers and you're taking pictures. All of our bad photos are on your Facebook page. <laughs> Jesus. But seriously, there is not much that we could do without our parents and without our guardians and without our support team. So for those of you who are here tonight and who are watching and who couldn't make it because you're working or tired, that's valid too. We thank you. From the bottom of our cold teenage hearts, we thank you for all of your hard work and for all of the support that you've given us. We thank you. It is now time for the moment that you have all been waiting for, awards. Here's how it's gonna work. That's right, you got authoritative Emily now. When we read your name, you come up here, you get your award, you go sit back down. When we tell you, you may clap. I don't wanna hear a half clap, I don't wanna snap. I don't even wanna woo. I'm looking at you, Bug Galuska. <laughs> no woo's necessary until I say Bug can woo. No! You ready? I know it's not Susan, but Pilot and I are fun too. We're like the fun backup, I don't know, an aunt and uncle. Cousins. <laughs> yep, theater cousins. People on the street, you know. <laughs> I'd like to thank, um, Emma Gibson for helping me handwrite these. There's a lot of them. We'll get, hold on. Also, I heard those wooies. I heard. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I got there. I got a lot. Some of them will get more fun titles than the other. Some of them are a little bit more self-explanatory. Like our first one, we are starting with the category of Into the Woods. When we finish the Into the Woods ones, then you can clap. You wanna all practice clapping? Yeah, woo, good job. But, but we only do that when we say, yeah. right? Now, Guys, yeah. nod your heads, yes, thank you. Yes. Dog, no clap, <laughs> thank you. Well, oh. no woos. They've set a great precedent. But tonight, our winner for best lead in a musical is Bug Galuska. No, 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 no. no It makes it go so much faster. There are, you guys do not clap. There are, there are 90, not. There, there are 90 awards tonight. So unless for you the, want to be here till 10 p.m. For the sake of your parents, shut up. Do you want to do the one clap? Is that going to get it all out? Yeah. Okay. I thought it was stupid. That's why I got rid of it. Okay, you ready? You can actually do it. Ready? One, two, three. I'm so proud of you. No, of course you'd be behind. We're pulling for the back. Making for the end of this ticket. Nah, we're okay. Yeah. All right, so next up for best supporting actor in a musical, we have Emma Gibson. <laughs> it, it almost worked. Best ensemble member in the musical goes to Gray Bruley. God. We're so proud of you. Technical marvel in a musical, it goes to Connor Powell. And Yuki Benjamin. <laughs> That's right, they can have two claps, it's okay. Is, is that it? Yeah, it's this one. Uh, continuing on the trend of loving our techies, for best backstage techie in a musical, Kaya Hudak. Ooh. Oh, I can actually, do you want me to hold it and you can grab the mic? I was pulling for you as well. No, you're not. I'm trying to Hudak. There we are. Though we've already established that she's not here, we still will honor with a single clap, Sophia Williams for Mike Magician. Ah, there you go. Um, 
Oh, she is here. <laughs> Most likely to know everybody else's lines goes to Maddie Gagne. Shocker. We know. The most improved actor, musical category, goes to belt kicker himself, Michael Voss. I'll woo for Michael, woo! For best, or no, oh my gosh. For lighting master in a musical, we have Isabella Williams. Stop saying Bella! Did I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Izzy. I'm just gonna go with Izzy. I'm trying to be fancy. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh. You know what, I'm sorry. Uh, well, going on trend, the fastest memorizer, you know who you are, is Madison Kanye! For dance extraordinaire, we have Gray Bruley. Somehow, and this is because I'm disappointed a little bit in all of you, somehow <laughs> just barely beating out Will Austin of all people, Master Magician in a Musical goes to Aaron Barsoomian. For those of you who don't get it, um, Will was only in the one act, guys. Guys, <laughs> only in the one act. A little disappointing. We'll get there. One acts are after. Next, for Master Vocalist, Bug Galuska. We have alluded to this moment a few times before, and the smile on his face says he knows what's coming. Third callback. The funniest moment in a musical for kicking his belt, Michael Voss. And right alongside him, for most willing to take risks, we have Grace Voss. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we don't. Madam President isn't here right now, but if she was, Picture. yeah, we would tell her that she has won Best Death in a Musical. For Best Physicality, we have C.J. Johnson. <laughs> Are they here? No, okay, okay. cool. We'll Move in right along. We will deliver all these awards, don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> Set it aside. <laughs> oh, and four. Best pretend mom, Emily Perrin. That worked out really well. It did. Professional cow handler goes to the one and only Elio Haig. <laughs> Don't look surprised. Who did you think it was going to? For most willing to try new things, Gabe Laughlin. Is he not Certainly here? Certainly not here. Yeah. <laughs> For best portrayal of an antagonist in a musical, Jasmine Duncan. Whoa. Here, do you not want to take the camera? Uh, we cannot emphasize this award enough. This is the award Last Minute Marvel, and we would love to present and thank Lydia Tomlinson. I really hope she does. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> For the master of the quick change musical edition, we have the one, the only, Lindsay Bernard. For most convincing on stage scream, we have Rebecca Dahmer. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Now I'm even more certain that he's not here. Oh my God, he is! Guys, this is my favorite award of all night. Well, second. This is the Wake Up Fez Award going to Nick Farinaccio. <laughs> Sorry for saying you wouldn't be here. I thought you'd be asleep. <laughs> Yeah. Miss, miss one word is out. Should we say the same time? The next award is for best on and off stage duo in a musical for Emily Perry. Guys, this Thank is you. 
Thank so you. So cute. He gave us the double clap. Oh, because there's two of us. Yes. Oh. Well, this one's sad. For best director in a musical, Susan Palmer. I'm sure she's watching. Hi, Susan. Hi, Susan. Feel better, Susan. Oh, you got it. Thus concluding the Into the Woods section of the night. You may clap freely. Perfect, Promise. now we're moving on to the next section. One act. Woo! So for the best lead in the one act, Megan Jamison. <laughs> Forgot a syllable in there, but that's Sorry, all right. Sorry, Gemma, oh my, just Don't stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> best supporting actor in the one act, Bog Galuska. For best ensemble member in the one act, we have Jacob Birnbaum. <laughs> VIP status. I'm gonna go up the stats there. Thank you. For fastest set changer, Kaya Hudak. We're making quick time. We are. I'm sure everyone actually enjoys it. Uh, this one is where it makes sense. So the master musician in the one act is Will Austin. <laughs> the most improved actor, one act edition, goes to Brendan Conley. Not uh, here. That's okay. <laughs> we'll get him next time. For outstanding tech member in a one act goes to Yukina Benjamin. Getting the hang of it now, and I'm proud of you for it. The slayer of stage combat goes to Susie Chipanelli. Yeah. All right, Susie. Susie, you did it! <laughs> for our costume master, again, someone we appreciate immensely, Charlotte Pierce. And Megan Jameson! Yeah! You know that. I know the doubles. I was the only one. Oh, we, yay! We got both doubles in here. For most supportive cast member, in a one act, we have Nat Cronin. <laughs> and for professional dead man, we have Emma Gibson. she's not here, I'll direct it towards a camera. I'll choose this one. If it's not on that one, I'll look silly. It's okay. Awesome. For D&D &D Deity, Susie Cipanelli. That was good. Uh, for, oh, this is a, is this? Yes, okay, perfect. For best on and off stage uh, bond in a one act is Jasmine Duncan. And Gray Brewley. For best work handling the Tia mat, Ben Burnbaum. And for best yes and attitude. Oh, you can clap for the one act. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, she knows where the sections end. So that was the one act. Applause freely. Now I can say the best yes and attitude goes to Maddie Gagne. And me. And, and, and me. And I think. Maybe. <laughs> or and not. maybe Emily Parent. If, I'm pretty sure. If we find it. I, or, or not. We'll I figure swear it out. To God. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds irrelevant. Our standout theater council member, Violet Delorier. Our fastest run to hometown, Grace Voss. <laughs> oh, the 
most spirited award goes to Elio Haig. <laughs> and the award for the strong senior role model goes to Emily Parent. The most confident first year actor goes to Emma Gibson. Wow. And the most flexible techie goes to Penelope Noza. <laughs> the most flexible actor award goes to Grey Bruley. Yeah. <laughs> and the most improved techie, Sophia Williams, again. We're proud of you from afar. It, they're going to start They're falling. going to. It's <laughs> the most improved actor, overall edition. You wrote this. Come on, you know. Emma Gibson. <laughs> Our up and coming lightning phenomenon. Lighting. Oh. <gasps> lighting phenomenon. <laughs> Laura Easterday. No. Okay, that's that's fair. That's okay. That's fair. Oh. I know that they're not here, but the outstanding actor in the junior jam goes to Aries Young. <laughs> Going bestie. Uh, the most confidence growth goes to August Nolan. That's okay. It's okay. It wasn't required. The most helpful crew member goes to Penelope Noza. <laughs> the sophomore showing strong leadership was Rachel Ledoux. I can, I can, I'll, I'll start doing mine. Make sure Great call. <laughs> the most dynamic inflection award was given to Kira Gadet. <laughs> and the leader in training goes to Penelope Noza. Leader in succeeding. The Jack of All Trades Award goes to Jessica Southwick. Oh, yeah. Uh, the bringer of onstage chaos, Michael Voss. Oh, Michael, sorry. you're being type awarded. It's like typecasted. The Cool, Calm, Collected Award goes to Quinlan Steele. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> the Most Likely to Cry on Closing Night Award goes to Jasmine Duncan. <laughs> the most memorable on-stage presence and so far clearly off-stage presence is Bugaluska! <laughs> Our stellar master of props goes to Peter Larson. I didn't know if he was Thanks for helping with the senior song. Yeah, he was a great jump on. Literally, we were just like, Peter, we need help. It worked. The most go with the flow goes to Lindsay Bernard. <laughs> you get to read that one, I don't know. <clears throat> and the award for goth goddess is Connor Powell. <laughs> I appreciate your impression of Connor Powell. I don't, I, it's kind of hard to see, so I don't know if he's here, but his sister can accept it if he's not. Uh, the Sideline Supporter Award goes to Will Pierce. Yeah. We could Walk, act like Will. Um, I need you to act like Will. Izzy, we're going to pawn all of Sophia's awards onto you, <laughs> by the way. Uh, the, the Gone Too Soon Award goes to Elio Haig. I'm not sorry, I thought it was clever. <laughs> well, dead to uh, no. <laughs> the, oh my God, 
what are we gonna do without you? Award goes to Yuki Benjamin. <laughs> The Better Late Than Never Award goes to Calabordo. <laughs> the Last Minute Memorizer Award goes to... <laughs> Pilots Laurier. Oh yeah. <laughs> The most supportive techie award goes to Chris Gilman. And this award, while we love you all, there's no words to describe how important this award is um, and how influential this person has been in our cast. Uh, well, sorry, this member has been in our cast for not a long time, but we love and appreciate them. Everything they've done, outstanding job this year. So that is why the most well-rounded actor award goes to Milky White. <laughs> Give her I'm coming. Thus concludes the award section of our night. Good job. Milky's got flour on her. Oh, yeah, Milky's still got baby powder on her. Now it's time for the sad part. Milky White, it just feels a little inappropriate. <laughs> Would have got Elio up here. <laughs> Elio's the only one who could really do it. So, this is the part that gets a little, a little hard, especially if you're a junior watching your seniors leave, and if you're a senior being like, oh my god. But right now we're going to do our senior send-offs. We're gonna start with the techies and then we're gonna have our Susan stand-ins who could never fill your place. Read what Susan wrote. But first, Mr. Bell with the techies. When we say your name, stay on stage and don't leave. Ever. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I have one thing I wanna add because I'm really super proud of this. Um, one X this year, this is the first time in my 25 years here where we had the crew and the cast entirely from the class. And I, that just makes me so happy. So these are my notes. You know why? Because you don't give the dyslexic guy notes. So the first person I want to recognize is Izzy Williams. Um, she has been uh, amazing in this. She just always took on the job that initially nobody really wanted, <laughs> which was <laughs> putting microphones on actors. And you have no idea how stressful an activity that is um, because actors don't, they have focus <laughs> issues backstage. <laughs> Emily, am I on stage? And she started there. So, yep, over there, in the board. You're, 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 you're gonna be where they line up. Okay, second is Connor Powell. He's been our live sound person, and I've never seen anybody pick up the soundboard quicker than him. In fact, I, what was your first show? Uh, Shrek. Shrek, yeah. He actually picked up the soundboard during the show <laughs> and did an awesome job. And it takes a really, really good ear to be able to figure out whose microphone's too loud and whose is too soft, and to remember to turn them off when people are backstage <laughs> and they're talking about stuff they shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. bye. You're, you're good. Get over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
He knows who to be fearful of. Next is Chris Gilman. Chris has done so many different things backstage, including roll on it now. <laughs> um, to, he, 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 he's like our utility infielder. Um, he'll pick up whatever job needs to be done. Sometimes it's being backstage, sometimes it's listening to the tech headset and to relay messages. Sometimes it's, uh, let me see, uh, sometimes it's helping put microphones on people, again, uh, a, a touchy job. So here you go, my friend. And uh, the last is Kaya Hudak. Kaya is somebody who never came to Tech Club. <laughs> she has commission. No. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for. No, you, you're not done yet. You get this too. There you go. <laughs> but she, she has actually filled in some really important jobs backstage. And again, the, the hardest job sometimes is the moving of props and the organizing of things backstage and the pushing of actors out of the way because they're standing where you're supposed to be and things like that. Um, and and uh, that's, a, that's a very difficult job. Um, and if there are any seniors that I have missed I apologize, and you can come to see me afterwards, and I'll give you your stuff. But <laughs> I don't think there is. I mean, Susan sent me a list this morning, and it had it even non-senior on it. So, okay, okay, okay. So we're good. We're good. All right. So you're up next. Yeah, techie stay. Techie stay. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to mingle with actors. The techies are going to have to mingle with actors. So they're going to do the reading, and I'm going to do the passing out. Sure. It should be right there. This is Wednesday. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is there. It's got to be there. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. Should I do the to be read part? Yes. To be read. Yes. Oh. This is from Susan, by the way. This is not from us. Okay. Firstly, I want to say that I am so sad that <laughs> to be missing this special and important event from holding awards online in 2022, or 2020, that's a lie, <laughs> to holding them for a live streamed audience last year, I thought this year might allow for some normalcy. Alas, foiled again. <laughs> so, I wait. Whoop. <laughs> I read words and write. Okay, anyways. So, that wasn't Susan. So, <laughs> so, I write these words for you from my home. This is an incredibly strong group. They have always been small but mighty. From their first junior jam play, I know Emily's rolling her eyes at its mention, <laughs> to their outstanding leadership through a pandemic. This group of seniors is remarkable. They will be so deeply missed. So for our first senior, it's gonna be Cala Bordo. Cala, Cala joined us later in the game, but she brought heart, humor, dependability, and determination. From watching her as a cheerleader in Monster and She Kills Monsters, to seeing her rise as a cheerleader in Alien Spy and Junior Jam, she seems to be typecasted already. <laughs> So glad you could join us, Kala. My only wish is you had been here sooner. May your, may your journey with theater continue. You will always have a community here. You will be missed. Our next senior is Elio. Elio is sneaking out early, so I'm a bit grumpy about having to write a senior send-off preemptively. Not fair. <laughs> Elio shines on stage, radiates joy, always has, from a freshman in Matilda to Jack in the, in, into the woods. <laughs> I know Elio will shine in song, dance, and spirit. You will be missed. The next senior is Lindsay. Lindsay joined us early on in convocation. Her love of theater, dance, performance has always been clear. 
Lindsay is remarkable because she simply shows up, does her job, is ready to go with enthusiasm and a yes and attitude, and somehow brings no outside drama with her. How can a person be so incredibly dramatic on stage and so cool and collected off stage? We all know she will go on to soar. May theater remain part of your life. You will be missed. The next senior is Yuki. What on earth will we do without you? <laughs> Yuki showed up, quiet and unassuming. I have to say, honestly, I wondered at first how she would survive as a stage manager. She seemed reserved and contained. Her ferocity, ability to move others, communication skills, and commitment to excellence have set her far apart from stage managers in the past. It is not an easy job, and there is so much responsibility, and the work in the end is invisible. She did it with professionalism, care, and humility. Yuki, I know you will excel in whatever you do. You will be missed. Um, pardon me if I cry, even though this is not my speech. Um, our next senior is Pilot. Years ago, when Pilot was just in eighth grade, he came to an improv show at The Grind and joined us. It was clear that he had talent, confidence, and strong instincts for the stage, yet he wasn't arrogant. It can be easy, especially as one of the few males actor in our program, to be cocky or full of oneself, but Pilot has done quite the opposite. I would say that he has worked more for the heart of this community than for himself. He often showed up with cookies or brownies for the cast. He met outside of school hours, often to determine celebrations and events. He, or he organizes fundraisers and activities. He always works collaboratively and cared about the excellence of the shows alongside with the environment for the community. He's been a role model and a strong leader. Alongside this, he is incredibly talented. From a leading role in Anonymous his freshman year to an emotional and beautiful presentation of the Baker in Into the Woods to a hilarious representation of Mr. Wormwood, Pilot, Pilot <laughs> has surely shown on the stage here at BFA. I hope that you continue in the theater wor world, Pilot. Whatever you choose to do, they will be lucky to have you. You will be missed. And last, but very not least, Emily. Uh, I'm not really sure how to say goodbye to Emily, and I'm so sorry that I'm not here to do so tonight. I met Emily as an eager and overflowing eighth grader. She was simply bursting with, let me add it, <laughs> energy. Over the years, I have seen her tackle and take on enormous efforts, large roles like the one in She Kills Monsters to supporting roles in Anonymous. Emily has always been willing and ready. The quality of being ready and willing has caused me to lean on her often, probably more so than I have with most students. She has taken almost all of my classes, some of them multiple times, and I often turn to her to lead in my absence and model for others. She has always eagerly said yes. She is bright, talented, and determined, but this ability to say yes and to bring her whole heart into being to things it has made, her so, it's made her exceptional in this program. She has been a real leader and at times taken a hit for doing so. It isn't always easy to lead your peers. I know that Emily will bring her force, intelligence, and commitment with her wherever she goes. We are grateful for the care she has put into growing this program. Your legacy will live on. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> it is at this time that I would like to offer the class of 2022 their final bow at BFA. There is one thing that the seniors didn't get to do.
there's one thing left that the seniors have not gotten to do this year that seniors in the past have, and that is cut their cake. Every year at um, the cast party for the musical, the seniors are invited to take the first cut in the celebratory cake. And because we didn't have a proper cast party, we did not get to cut a proper cake. So it is now that I am more than excited to present the senior class's cake. God damn it. It's marble. Okay. We literally last minute bought this cake. That's fine. It's fine. It's marble. Phil, no, he's a science guy. Phil, 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 Phil. Phil. 